with Kenny from Todd Tutoring. And with the new year upon us, with the 2022 to 2023 and the ACT coming up right away for most people in April, I thought I might do a new video going through problems one through 10 on really just how I would walk through these questions. And then especially if you're confused about how I do this, I have a four-step process, be, please refer to the previous video before, which really breaks it down into detail. Well, and without further ado, I'll get to it. So going through here, we'll do the first 10 questions and go and just walk through it. So for number one, it says the numbers one through 15 were each written on individual pieces of paper, one number per piece. Then the 15 pieces were put in a jar. One piece of paper will be drawn from a jar at random. What is the probability of drawing a piece of paper with it <clears throat> with a number less than nine written on it? So the key points here, a number less than nine, so not including nine, and we wanna find the probability of it. So from here, going from the information, we know that there's 15 numbers because there's one per piece. So that means for probability, we have it over 15. And then when we think the numbers that are less than nine, that would just be one through eight. So that'd be a total of eight numbers. And so should we look at eight for 15. And just, does that make sense? Yeah, that's about a little less, everything less than nine, a little more than half. Then one out of nine doesn't make any sense. There's definitely more than one to 15. These two are wrong. So E is my right answer, and then I can move on. All right. For number two, which of the following expressions is equivalent to negative 4x cubed minus 12x cubed plus 9x squared? So the question is really asking us to really just simplify this. And they give us an expression. And how do we do this? Just remember, hey, I just need to have them to have the same power. And then I just add and subtract the coefficient like normal. So here I see the cubes are the same. So the negative 4 minus is 12 would get me negative 16x cubed. And this is a 2, so I would do that differently for the 9x squared, so plus 9x squared. So looking at my answer choices, I find one matched up. Perfect. Does that make sense? Yep, I would simplify it that way. Some things to be careful of. Some people subtract the 4 and the 12, which just makes the h look really good. And then they add the powers. Remember, the powers stay the same in that case. So j would be that correct answer. Moving on, number three, when x equals two, 10 plus three, parentheses, 12 divided by three, x equals what? So I love these questions because it's super easy. They just ask us to find these equivalents and basically you just want to plug it in. It's the plug it in type of question. And then really just testing your PEMDAS. So plug it in, I would get 10 plus three, parentheses, 12 divided by parentheses, three times two bigger parentheses, remember parentheses inside, most inside first. So I get 10 plus three times 12 divided by three times two. So that looks like a multiplication or subtraction, three times two, which would be six. And then to find that further, this would be 12 divided by six is the next step here. So we get 10 plus three times 12 divided by six, which is two. And then multiplication next, and then 10 plus three times two, which is equal to 10 plus six, is equal to 16. And awesome. Looking okay, for the answers, yeah, it would make relatively sense. I would be really strong pressed if I have a division that I get 104. Um, 34 might be it, but look if you look here, that would make general sense. Awesome, I'm gonna move on. Number four, really testing your absolute value. Just what is this expression? Remember the first 10 to 20 are generally just kind of easy as your easy way through it. So really make sure you get these points. So here you just want to evaluate like parentheses, but keep the absolute value. So each of these, so six minus four is two, minus the absolute value of three minus eight, which is negative five. And then absolute value just makes it positive, two minus absolute value of five, which is five. So two minus five, this gets me negative three. Generally that makes sense. I'm kind of seeing that these close values together so the 21 wouldn't make any sense and everything else. Um, would be a general valid answer. Perfect. And then moving on to number five, this is the expression in quantity or parentheses 4c minus 3d times the quantity of 3c plus d is equivalent to. So here I'm looking at this, I just need to simplify again, really to distribute, distribute, simplify. And this is really just your FOIL, if you already said it that way in school, by really just distributing to make a quadratic. And so here it's, I multiply these two, 4C times 4D times, and the biggest thing here is it's negative 3D times the 3C times the D. So 4C times 3C, here we get me 12C squared, 
and then 4C times D would give me plus 4CD. Then negative 3D times 3C would be minus 9CD. Notice how I keep the, it could be confusing if you switch up the variables, so I keep it like to say CD, and then negative 3D times D is minus 3D squared. Looking at this, remember simplification has the same power, same variables, so it would be these two in the middle here. So I get my 12C squared, 4CD minus 9CD, just add the coefficient, so you get negative 5CD minus, sorry, minus 3D squared. And then we just want to make sure that's somewhere in these answer choices. So this one has a five and perfect. That gets me my answer. Here, just make sure you be careful with the sign and like, does this make sense? Yep, I would just make sure that I would see a quadratic here. The only time you see a cancel if it's like A plus B times A minus B, which is what we don't have here. So C would be that answer right there. Perfect, moving on to six of the 180 students. In college course, one fourth of the students earned an A for the course, one third of the students earned a B for the course, and the rest of the students earned a C for the course. How many students earned a C for the course? So there's plenty of ways to do so here, but the main question here is how many earned a C? So then we're thinking, okay, well, how many earned a C? That means I'm thinking how many people got a B, or and we know that's a third got a B, and then a fourth got an A. So that means the rest of the people got a C. So in that case, I could add up the fractions, take away from one. Or you can just figure out how many people got an A, how many people got a B, and then the rest is C. And I'll probably do that way. So if I want to figure out A, that means it's one fourth times the whole students. So one fourth times 180, and that would be 45 using calculator. B be a third times 180. And that gets me 60. So then the rest of C is would basically be 180 students minus the 45 and minus the 60. Uh, be careful, a lot of people just kind of add these up and that's how they get to 105. You want to subtract it because you're looking for, remember the end result of the question, which is how many people got C. And so in that case, you take 180 minus 45 minus 60 minus 105 total and you get 75 students. And if you think about it, that makes sense because a fourth and a third is quite a bit of the class. So you would probably want to think that more majority got the A and the B. So probably wouldn't be 135 or 120. And so kind of one of those lower numbers would make the most sense. Moving on, question seven. The number of fish F in Skipper's Pond at the beginning of each year can be modeled by the equation F of X is equal to three times two to the power of X, where X represents the number of years after the beginning of the year 2000. For example, X equals, X equals zero represents the beginning of the year 2000 x equals one represents the beginning of the new year 2001 and so forth. According to the model, how many fish were in Skipper's Pond and they began the year 2006? Okay, so question to ask how many fish and the year 2006. And basically we kind of found this model before they give us the model. And then we have, we have to think what is x? x is the number of years after 2000, because the x equals one 2001. So if it's 2006, that must mean x is equal to six. So from there, just plug it in. Very similar to the problem we have for number three, except they give us a function. And so we plug that in. So the number of fish will be equal to three times two to the power of six. Notice the PEMDAS and the equality, you have to do two to the power of the six first. Two to the power of six, you type that into a calculator. And that would be 64. So you get three times 64, maybe the number of fish and Looking at that, it would be 192. And that generally makes sense here. That'd be a good answer. I'd be really hard pressed to think about it for three and two to give 46,000 or 1,480. And so that answer generally makes sense. I'm gonna move on from there. All right, number eight. Janice drove from Chicago to Baton Rouge at 8 a.m. He was 510 kilometers from Baton Rouge. At 1 p.m., he was 105 kilometers from Baton Rouge, which is the following values is closest to the average speed of Manisha's car in kilometers per hour from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay, so we really want to find the average speed. To find average speed, we really need to know how many kilometers per hour. That's your average speed. So we have to figure out how many kilometers he traveled. So breaking this down, we see that at 8 a.m., he was 
510 kilometers away. At 1 p.m., he was 105 kilometers away. So figure out the distance first. It would just be 510 kilometers minus 105, which would get us 405 kilometers traveled. So we got this, the kilometers. Next, we need the number of hours. So from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. So I think many of us <laughs> counting time in class we would figure that out. But from 8 to noon would be four hours and then just one more additional hour, so five. So we have five hours between, I, I, I like to think of it chronologically. So I see it as five hours here. And then again, now we have both elements to find kilometers per hour. So the speed would just be my distance, 405 divided by my five hours, and that's gonna get me 81 miles per hour. Kilometers, kilometers, kilometers per hour. That's here. And that makes general sense. He drove five hours, he did 400 miles. So probably something not too small. This is way too fast, thinking about how many miles he traveled in that case. Perfect. Moving on to question nine. In the figure below, E and G lie on AC, D and F lie on AB, D, E, and F, G are parallel to B, C, and the given legs are in feet. What is the length of A, C in feet? Okay, so I'll bring a caveat here. This, I will always say when you see a similar figure in ACT, that about 99 times out of 100, they probably look similar, they look congruent, they probably are, because they are drawn to scale. And this is not drawn to scale, but relatively they are. I, most of the time, they're very well drawn to scale. And so what I see here in this case is a very classical example. And I don't wanna to go too much into the geometry of it, but just from parallel lines and you can use like AA um, doing it, you don't need to prove it, but like ADE is similar to AFG because of parallel lines, but you don't need to know that. All you need to know from this is that they're, they're similar. If they're similar, they are then proportional in that case. And so all you're doing is setting up fractions. But one kind of side note here, we could figure out all the values. So like here I just see straight away, you can notice that this is a double proportional. So you can calculate the value. So seven, this would be 14, six would be 12. Or, or easier sense, the AC is very similar to the line AB. So it would be very, AB would be proportional to AC that ratio. And that should be proportional to AD over AE, or just one to two in that case. So in that case, I could just add all these up. So that a, AB would be eight plus seven plus six, that's 21. And so if it's one to two, I just got to double that value, AC would be 42, right? And then I want to look at it. It wouldn't be 13 because AC was already been in the E. I'd say the AE is already 16. I'm drawing a scale. 26 really doesn't make sense. 29. So you're 50 50, you guess. Um, but at the end of the day, D would be that best answer. All righty. Last but not least, I apologize if I'm running a bit quick as the first 10 questions are a little quicker than usual. But for number 10, this is Cat Reader 1 is at 15 miles in two and a half hours. What is the average? So basically, all this is just the speed of the minutes it takes her to run one mile. So basically it's how long, you want to rewrite this. The question is how long does it take her to write one mile, run one mile, right? And so if we're doing that, then we want to take the distance, the time basically, and then divide by the distance to get the unit rate because one mile is just the unit rate. So looking at that, we have, it takes two runs 15 miles in two and a half hours. One thing I'll note, it says minutes. So I probably want to convert the two and a half hours to minutes. So in that case, I can write it as 2.5 hours and then multiply it by the number of minutes in an hour, which is 60 minutes per hour. If you want to do the dimensional analysis, you don't have to, which would get us 150 minutes. And then voila, look how it's 150 and 15, makes the math super easy. Don't even use calculator. So you take the time, 150 minutes, about that by the 15 miles. And that's just going to be 10 minutes per mile. And because we only have one mile, it's going to make my math really easy. 10 minutes to run one mile on average. And the reason why we say average, because maybe she could run 
some miles faster than others. So those are the first 10 questions. Very quick. You definitely want to make sure you can get some of these concepts that they, if you had any questions on, please just let me know in the comments. But if not, um, always feel free. I kind of have here, take a screenshot, see how you did it compared to mine. Hopefully that was helpful. And with that,